Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Exploring Joomla 3.x. In the last episode we installed Joomla uh, into our virtual host on, in this JoomDev folder on our desktop. Uh, verified that all the files are there and we talked a little bit about the structure. Um, in this episode we're going to install our copy of Joomla that we've installed in the JoomDev folder into the NetBeans IDE as a project. And the reason why I want to do this is, um, uh, well, for a couple. Uh, first, it's going to make development a little easier. And the other is, if you want to trace the source code, if you didn't have an IDE and you were bebopping around these folders trying to figure out where things are, it would be pretty tough. I mean, we know that most of the core uh, CMS code resides in this library folder under under these folders, for instance, legacy controller, and then you know this is the legacy controller uh, code, and then we said, well, this extends uh, J object. Well, where's J object? You know, the, the the problem would be, you know, how do you find all this stuff? Where the, if it were imported into the IDE, we would discover that uh, we could right click and have the ID take us to the next source so that we can read source code and maybe better understand what we're trying to learn. Now again I want to uh, remind you that uh, I am a bit of a neophyte programmer myself so I'm kinda learning this and I'm, I'm trying to teach as I've learned and I'm sure that I'll make mistakes so be patient with me if you are a uh, Joomla component developer or, or extension developer and, and you see that I'm using something wrong or could do something better uh, by all means please um, uh, you know either email me through my website at myheap.com uh, using the contact link at the top of the page uh, or comment in the video and I'll, I'll be sure to watch that so let's get started let's uh, launch uh, ID or uh, NetBeans now remember we have a few different ways when we install NetBeans, it uh, put a link on our desktop, so you could use that. You could use the dash um, search by searching for NetBeans and start it there. Or you can use the shortcut that we pinned to the Unity bar if you've done that. I'm just going to do that. So NetBeans will start up. It loads its modules and all that sort of fun stuff. We'll wait on it. Okay, so we're ready to um, import our project. The um, hang on just a second. I done this once, and uh, um, I need to remove this so that I don't get an error. Sorry about that. To uh, import uh, the project, uh, we're going to click File and New Project, or you can use the Command shortcut Control Shift N. Okay, so um, the project that we want is a PHP project, and we want a PHP application with existing sources because, well, all the code is already there. We're going to hit next, and then the source here we need to specify where are the uh, where's the source code uh, located. So we hit browse. Remember that uh, Joomla uh, is installed in this JoomDev folder on our desktop, so we're going to select that. And hit OK. The project name, you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it as JoomDev. The PHP version, the version that we're going to select here is 5.4. And the, uh, even though LAMP installs with version 7, it doesn't look like um, the NetBeans IDE has been updated to support version 7. Um, the minimum version required by Joomla is 5.3.10, if I remember right. Uh, we'll take a look at that and verify it. Uh, so I'm just going to select 5.4. The uh, default encoding of UTF-8 is fine. Now here I'm going to kind of vary a little bit. Normally when you create uh, a project you will uh, keep the metadata about the uh, um, project um, with the project, but we're going to keep the metadata in a separate directory. Now this could cause problems, but I, it has never caused a problem for me in this um, instance. So I'm going to click Browse and then um, NetBeans has created a folder when we installed it called NetBeans Projects. I guess it's just a convenient place for you to put your projects. I'm going to select that folder and hit OK and it should populate here home, your username, whatever that is, NetBeans Projects and Joom Dev. So at this point we're good. We can hit Finish. So NetBeans will create the new project and scan it in. Now the scanning of the project can take some time, so 
uh, might be a little sluggish. But because um, the we said that this is a project, uh, you know, application with sources, and it it has discovered the index PHP in the um, project. Uh, uh, root of joomdev it will open that up by default so while we're here let's take a look here so um, when joomla starts this is the file that it loads uh, when you're accessing the front end so when you're oops I'm sorry when you're here at joom.dev index.php this is the file that's loaded okay and uh, this file goes through and says, okay, it says that uh, Joomla requires a minimum of uh, 5.3.10. So it will go and look and tell you and make sure that your system can run it. Uh, and then it does some other stuff and then it starts the, the application. Now, honestly, this is different from Joomla 2.5. So I'll have to kind of, it's kind of streamlined. I need to dig in a little bit um, and figure out how uh, Joomla uh, does its magic under the hood so that I can share that with you. But back to the point of the IDE. The, you know, Joomla uh, has a definite folder hierarchy that we have to keep uh, to keep from breaking it. And for example, components are under, for the front end, are under the components folder. And then uh, for the administrative back end, they're under administrator and then components. And we'll discuss more of this uh, when we take our little walk through. Uh, Joomla. But let's go into the front end components and let's just grab one of these random. Let's say, well, how about content? Content component is the one that displays the um, web page on, on, on the front end. And uh, so let's take a look at content.php because this is the file that Joomla pulls and, and runs when it's uh, loading an article or, or whatever. So anyway, we were talking about uh, the you know w you know tracing stuff. So we see here, okay, J Factory get application. Well, what if I want to know what J Factory is? I can click on that. I can right click and say, hey, navigate and go to the declaration. And when I go to the declaration, it shows me that uh, this is an abstract class called J Factory, which means that you cannot instantiate it. Um, we see that uh, all the variables are static and as we go down we see that the uh, public me uh, the methods of the class are static which means that this uh, we know that uh, being in an abstract class we we can't instantiate it and that the uh, that the methods would be called statically and we see that done here with jfactory the scope resolution operator and then whatever function so that's kind of the nice thing about um, about uh, using NetBeans or any IDEs that you can go through and say, well, what does this function do? Or what does this method do? Uh, we go a little further down here and we say, okay, well, we're creating an instance of a uh, controller, uh, of J controller legacy, get instance. Uh, we're calling that statically. Let's see what that is. Navigate, go to declaration. All right, so there's the J controller uh, legacy, extends J object. And on, on the left where you see the navigator, you'll see a list of all the methods that are available and the parameters and so we went to it was get instance so I've double clicked that so it takes me to the get instance function and I can read the source code and you know try to figure out how that works so anyway that's a, a nutshell of um, you know what the IDE can do uh, normally I like this projects folder up here I don't know why it's not um, oh there we go um, I like the projects uh, uh, folder listed over here on the side so it's easy to navigate and as we develop our own modules or components or plugins or whatever um, we're actually going to uh, develop them inside of Joomla so that we can test them on the front end as we're messing about over here and, uh, and but we'll discuss that the uh, next uh, episode we'll, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Joomla's file structure and what it means and, and, and how to use it and then from there we're probably going to launch into um, probably one of the simpler extensions to write uh, which is a module uh, if you recall modules are the little things that sit on the sides of Joomla remember I told you that 
uh, the main this is a menu module and it, uh, it it's this module helps you navigate around the site by allowing you to put links in it the login form is a module this handles a user's login or creating a new account or whatever we need to do uh, additionally there are modules that are available on the back end um, but we'll we'll go into those perhaps later so anyway uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video uh, again uh, please bear with me I'm a new fairly new programmer myself and I may get some of the nomenclature uh, wrong uh, from time to time and and uh, if you have questions please ask and and let's uh, let's just have some fun and and try to learn this together so I'll see you in the next video in the meantime have a blessed day